I have an email that I want to share with you. This is a, a email that I received from a subscriber. I hear from this gentleman often. His name is Jeff. Uh, he, he asked me some questions and they brought up some good points about things that I'd like to talk to you about. And as soon as I come back, we'll get started on it. So the email that came from my friend Jeff starts out like this. Don, hi, it's good to hear that your foot is on the mend. Talking about my foot surgery. Even if the healing process is slow, at least you're moving in the right direction. And speaking of moving, I'm writing now because I would like your views on a question that I have entertained for some time now. And in my opinion, this is a good question that I wanted to, I had to make sure my mic was on. I, I, for some reason I thought it wasn't on. But anyway, his first question here is, what would you say are possible indicators that the time has come for an expat to reevaluate their choice and to make a change, either by returning to their home country or by moving to a different country, which according to all reports, may not have the same issues. Don't get me wrong, as you have rightly observed, no country or culture is without its share of challenges and shortcomings. And in the face of new difficulties, it behooves any expat to take a breath, reflect, and not pack their bags the instant the going gets a bit rough. Boy, I tell you, I couldn't have said that any better myself. It behooves you, it behooves any expat to take a breath, reflect, and not pack their bags an instant, the going gets a bit rough. Because I know some that did just that. The very minute they encountered loud noise at the Poseidon, they packed their bags up and got out. So he goes on to say, but between the extremes of fleeing at the first sign of trouble and sticking by one's original decision come hell or high water, there is a middle ground, and my question to you is this. What exactly is that middle ground, and how does a new expat know when they have unwittingly ventured out of it? How are we to know when the time has come to contemplate a new move? So that's a good topic to discuss, because I've been here 18 months, the very first day I was here, here in Ecuador, well, it was okay because it was late at night and I went straight from the hotel to the airport, I mean, straight from the airport to the hotel, spent the night, got up the next day, had breakfast, and then got in a taxi and drove to Crucita. This is from Waikil to Crucita. Almost immediately, I started having doubts because I saw things from, as an observer, I saw things from the taxi that I never saw on Amelia and JP's channel, because they're the people that I followed, and, and they're the people that convinced me that Ecuador is the place to, to come. And, but I don't, as I, we're, as we're driving down the highway and going by the prison and, and then seeing a lot of the living structure that people were living in, yeah, and I, the first thoughts that came to my mind was, wow, third world country. What, what am I getting into here? And I saw this all the way to Crucita. On the first full day that I was here, I was having doubts. <laughs> and then, of course, when I got to the Airbnb in Crucita, I was ready to get back on a plane and go back to home and regroup, you know, and rethink this thing. I'm glad now that I didn't. So the next day I ended up coming to Monta and stayed in another Airbnb and that Airbnb turned out to be a uh, disappointment. I've got other uh, descriptions that I'll refrain from here. But you know, that day I met my real estate agent, a rental agent, and she found me a nice place to live, and I've been here ever since. 
So 18 months forward, I'm still here. But that doesn't go without saying that there were times, several times, throughout the 18 months that I've been here so far, that I've thought, this is not going to work. You know, because you hear me complain about noise and culture and the language and just struggling. When I thought about retiring, when I was living in the States and thinking about retiring and thinking about coming to, going to a remote location as a retiree, living abroad, I never thought about cultural differences and problems that I was going to have. I thought I was going to come to a paradise live here in a nice apartment, a high-rise building overlooking the ocean, and live the life of tranquility, tranquility, peace, and just be happy as a little bird, you know, on a spring day. It didn't really work out that way. And it, I don't think it works that way for anybody, folks. There, you've heard me mention talk about the honeymoon thing, the honeymoon phase. You come here, you're all excited about being here. When I came here, I wasn't all excited. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it was tough for me. Especially when my friends that came down here with me, when they left and went back home, and then I realized, I woke up and realized that I'm here all by myself. I don't know anybody. I had no clue what I was going to do that day. What's the first thing I'm going to do? But I managed, you know, I managed, I got through it, and I started meeting people and started meeting other expats and so forth. But I have to tell you, there have been several times, and I still have these, these thoughts. Sometimes I get homesick. I have videos of motorcycle trips that I did back home where I put my GoPro on my windshield and just did nothing but video of me cruising through uh, the countryside in, there in Arizona. And I look at those videos even today and I, I sometimes, I, sometimes I watch it and just enjoy it and sometimes I get really sad because I feel homesick. And I want to do that again. I wish that I could be I on my my motorcycle, my I had a Honda Goldwing. I had several of them over the, the last few years. But you know, it does happen, folks. You do. You hit. You you go when you come here. You're all excited. And you you're in that honeymoon period, and then all of a sudden you wake up one day, and the honeymoon's over. You I, my my recommendation at that point is that you have to start getting creative. You have to think of something to do. You get out, get on the Facebook page and start talking to people and ask people, what can I do? Where can I volunteer? You know, I had a specific mission to do when I came here. I wanted to get all my dental work done and anything else medical done before I ever made any major move to anywhere else. And then, of course, I met someone and, and I have a relationship with this person and that puts a whole new spin on the story you know I, I don't always don't often think about leaving I still do and I always bring up with Stella and tell her if I would go back someday to the States if by chance I just happen to go somewhere else if 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 you know I, it is a very definite, if anybody tells you, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. I, I want to say that if anybody tells you that they came here and never thought about going somewhere else or going back home, I don't, I will, I don't think I would believe them I, because I just think it's human nature. When you're raised, I spent 69 and a quarter years in the United States, and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm in another country, south of the equator, a country that I never even knew existed until just two or three years ago. 
So the middle ground, you know, Jeff, um, you know, what exactly is that middle ground? How does the new expat know when they're unwittingly ventured out of it? You just know. You wake up and you just, you get that gut feeling. I don't, you know, there are events that could take place. You could get robbed. You could have an accident. You could get sick. You could fall and hurt yourself. You could be a car wreck. Any number of things. The, the peril that took place here a few months ago scared me and made me think about getting out because I thought I'm not going to be able to find any food to eat because they were blocking the roads and people weren't getting products into Monta. Any number of things can happen. I say it's going to, it could be any or all of those. Most of the time I get up and I have a pretty good feeling about being here, especially when I've had a good night of sleep. I would be lying to you people through my teeth if I told you that I woke up every single day being a happy man here because I get discouraged by the noise and I get discouraged by the earthquakes. I get discouraged by cultural things that happen things that you observe, you know, as an expat. Jeff goes on to say, as I say, I have given much thought to this question myself, but thoughts on paper are one thing and actual experience is another. And as one who has walked the talk, I say walk the walk, talk the talk, you bring a perspective that can be useful to the rest of us. Now, by posing this question, I don't mean to imply there is a single right answer which applies to everyone, and that's the truth. There isn't a single answer. It could be one or all of those things that I mentioned. This is a highly personal decision, after all. Still, your perspective can be a useful starting point for those of us who do not yet have practical experience with living abroad. For my part, as I consider what countries and cities would best suit me, I have identified my deal breakers. That's a good idea, folks. Before you come here, think about what would be deal breakers for you and then explore those. Think. Think a little bit, folks. Don't do it like I did and just make a snap. I mean, it seems like I made a snap decision, but it actually took me several years of research, but then it took me less than six months to say, okay, here I go. I had a complete change of plans. It seems like every time I do a video, somebody pings me. I'll mute this. <coughs> But I suspect that once I commit myself and relocate, I could well fall victim to the folklore of the frog in the frying pan, which is to say that as, <clears throat> as the heat is gradually turned up, I may not notice when the water is boiling and that the time has come for me to leap out to find a new home. <clears throat> With this in mind, here's another question from Jeff. Have you put together something of a checklist so that the event conditions change so that in the event, conditions change and persist to such an extent that they tip the scales in favor of a move, you would be aware of it. Or would this exercise be more of a gimmick and not really all that instructive or helpful? With this in mind, have you put together something of a checklist so that in the event, conditions change and persist to such an extent that they tip the scales in favor of mood, you'll be aware of it. You will be aware of it. He's asking the question, will I be aware of it? Or would this exercise be more of a gimmick and not really all that in instructive or helpful? As I write this note, it occurs to me you have, in effect, already gone through this very exercise or you would never have left the United States in the first place. That is true. 
But just as you determined that moving from Mesa, Arizona to another city in the United States would not suffice, how might you be able to determine when moving from Monta to another city in Ecuador may not suffice either, and that instead you need to consider other countries altogether, such as perhaps Uruguay or Spain? I suppose this is highly subjective and not really an easy thing to hash out. That's true, Jeff. Which is precisely why I propose to toss this question in your lap so that I can learn your insights. He says, he signed off Jeff, P.S., just so you know, I'm still focused exclusively on Ecuador and it remains my person only choice. I think that's a good choice. I, I think, I tell everybody, come here with an open mind, you know. Before you leave the United States, it's not, it's not about just coming to Ecuador, but before you leave the United States, if you own a home, you got a bunch of possessions, you might want to put some of this stuff in storage for at least a year. You've heard me say it before, and I'm saying it again. And don't come here and buy a property right off the bat. A property. Don't do that. Come here and rent for six months, and then maybe renew your lease for another six months. But you got plenty of time. Don't forget, when you retire, you have time. So I hope I address this okay, Jeff. There, I tell people, you will know you will just have a gut feeling. Everybody that comes here is going to have that honeymoon, and I say that everybody's going to wake up someday and wonder what the hell they're doing here and start fantasizing about either returning home or going somewhere else. My thoughts exactly, if I decide I don't like, don't want to stay here in Monta, I might would go look at some of the cities up in the Andes, like Cotacachi or Loja, or maybe even back to Cuenca. And if I don't like either one of those, then I'll go somewhere else. I, I still have my sights set on Mexico at some point, but who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? There's a special someone in my life that might have a lot to say about that. So that's it, Jeff. I hope that helps you. Uh, and I hope it gives everybody else something to think about. If you stayed with me through this whole video, I thank you for that. And I hope you got something out of it. And I'll see you folks on another one. Ciao, ciao.